Developing tonight, the former USA Gymnastics doctor accused of abusing nearly 300 victims was back in a Charlotte, Michigan courtroom again today facing new charges of abuse. This time it's at a gymnastics club. Seems he took his so-called treatments all over Michigan. Larry Nassar sentenced to 175 years on seven separate charges. Today, dozens of new women took the stand at a new sentencing to tell their stories of horror by one of the biggest names in the sport, like Tiffany Dutton. I will say this. It takes a monster to sexually assault a child, but it takes a monster backed by ego, experience, and power fueled by multiple institutions to sexually assault a child in front of their own mother. It was uncomfortable and terrifying, but who was I to question the treatment that was supposed to heal me? The army of survivors, athletes who were constantly around, as she said, other teammates, their coaches, their parents, begging the question, how did no one know? And what about the famed coach, Bella Caroli, and his wife, Marta? Many of these girls were sent to their ranch without their parents, and they were put under Nasser's care there. And what about USA Gymnastics, who oversaw this whole place, and the U.S. Olympic Committee? Today, the gymnastics governing body tweeted this. We have received resignations from all of the members of its board of directors, as required by the USOC. USA Gymnastics thanks the board members for their service. We are grateful for the time and effort that each has devoted to USA Gymnastics. But many of Nasser's victims say the investigation is only beginning. Today, I sat down with three of Larry Nasser's victims, Olympians and national team members, Maddie Larson, Jeanette Antolin, and Jamie Dantzler, in this exclusive story. Jeanette, when you, when you look back on it and you think about Larry, everyone has said, he was one of the few people who was, who was nice to you. Tell me about your first interaction with him and what you thought of him and how it, how it all started. He was about the only person that was nice, that was an adult. Um, I don't remember my exact first interaction with him, but I just remember meeting him and knowing that he was the national team doctor. He was very important, mm -hmm. very smart. We were taught that he knew everything. He knew how to fix any injury that you had. So. With that being said, he then gains your trust by being a friend, confidant, um, giving you little gifts, making you feel special, um, and then develops into a friendship over the years because you worked with him for years if you're on the national team. So, I mean, that was the relationship. He was a listening ear. He wanted to make you feel better. He always wanted to help out any way he could. Maddie, you've spoken about the fact that this happened, these treatments happened while teammates were around, adults were around. Describe that for me. A lot of the time uh, with our interactions with Larry was at the Crowley Ranch and we had what we called the treatment room or we call, also called it the end room because that was the end of the hall. And it was there was a big TV and there was a couch and then there were two treatment tables behind the couch. So pretty much a lot of the time that he would treat us in that room, there were girls just chilling and watching TV and that's what he was so good at normalizing what he did, and there was usually another trainer in that room too. So I just thought, well, it can't be that bad what he's doing if he's doing it in front of my friends and my teammates and this other trainer. The first time I met Larry, I was 13, and then the first time I remember uh, my first interaction of him molesting me was when I was 14. Until um, I was 19. Do you remember what was going through your mind at that time? What did he say to you about why he was doing what he was doing? So the first time that I actually remember um, him molesting me, I had a really bad hip injury, and it was very, uh, it was like on my pelvic bone. So the first time he molested me, I was like, well, you know, th this is just how you treat an injury in that region. And that was pretty much the only injury I ever had around that area and everything else was from my knees down. And he was just so good at normalizing what he did and, and asking questions like, oh, does it feel better, what I'm doing? And I 100% I thought that it was a medical treatment. Jamie, did you ever say to anybody else on the team, does he do this to you? You know, this doesn't seem right. I never talked about it with, with anybody. 
Um, like she said, I think that's a, a great word, how he normalized it. Um, and the way I describe it to people is that I didn't talk about every time I put ice on right. or he taped my ankle or I didn't go and talk about any treatment. Um, in my mind, it, it was a medical treatment that was supposedly helping my back and my hips also. Did Bella and Marta Caroli know what the treatment consisted of? In my opinion, they, they had to know. Um, they've known about, I know that they knew about sexual abuse back, dating back from the 70s, not from just Larry Nassar, but other coaches that they 100% knew that children were being sexually abused. There were other coaches there that were abusing people? Yeah, there's other coaches right now abusing athletes. It's, that's why we keep talking about the whole culture and the fact that it's not just mental, physical, and emotional abuse, that I spent <clears throat> therapy, you know, years of therapy trying to deal with that side of the abuse. And when I realized I was sexually abused, so I said, just add it to the list. Explain, you know, g give people a sense of the Caroli Ranch. What was life there like? What were you expected to do and when you're injured, you know, obviously? And, you know, I think some people look at that and initially they thought, well, you know, it's tough. There's a lot of sacrifices when you're an Olympic right. athlete and you have to play hurt, right? So <clears throat> describe for people what's the difference between that understanding and what was actually happening. Uh, well, you know, we get up in the morning and um, they provided food. If they had it, I mean, they would search our bags for food. We weren't allowed to bring food. Our parents were not allowed to go to the ranch. Um, usually wake up and have breakfast and not supposed to talk to each other at breakfast. Why? Um, it's a distraction. I, yeah, a distract. They wanted us to be focused 100% of the time. We weren't allowed to talk. We weren't allowed to smile. We weren't allowed to talk to each other. Um, you know, it. I was afraid to even say when I was really injured. And that was the other thing. I don't, I don't even remember being able to tell my coaches or the national staff about my injuries because I was afraid if I told them, I, sometimes I wasn't believed that I was even injured. So, and then if, if, if I really was injured, it's like, oh, well, sorry, someone's taking your spot. Mm. And that's why I competed on a fractured back, I think three times actually, um, a broken toe that's healed broken because I was, I was even af afraid to tell them I was injured. And even thinking about it now, I'm like, my gosh, I usually would tell Larry more about my injuries than anybody else because I, I didn't want to be taken off national team or sent home. And you could find it in him and then he abused you. Exactly. And the thing is, is like, as, as a grown man, let's just put aside the fact that he was a doctor, um, he saw the abuse mm -hmm. and what we were going through and he should have reported it. He should have reported it himself. But it was and working for him. Of course. So it was just an easy opportunity for him to, to abuse sexually. Maddie, do you <clears throat> think that the Carolis knew what Larry was doing? That he was abusing gymnasts? Um, it's hard for me to believe that they didn't. I also think they just honestly did not care. They didn't. They didn't. I'm sure they didn't even ask, how are the athletes doing? What are their injuries? I'm sure they, they just didn't care. They, I feel like they kept Larry around because Larry was willing to let us compete with injuries. Um, at one point, I sprained and dislocated both feet at the same time, and Larry didn't even tape them. He didn't even get me a, a wheelchair to walk around. I had to find an office chair from our lounge and push myself around the camp, crawling. He just, you know, he was, they kept him around because he helped them out. And I just, it's really hard for me to believe that they didn't know what was going on. And if they didn't know, then they honestly did not care. But if any of you had complained to them and said, I, I they wouldn't believe us. Abusing me. They what would they? They wouldn't listen. Us? They wouldn't have done How would they react? About it. They'd laugh probably. I mean, if they didn't see it with their own eyes, they still allowed, you know, allowed him in our rooms yeah. alone. I mean, sometimes at the ranch, I'd be the last to get treatment, 
And I was scared that I was going to get in trouble because it was already past curfew. And he's like, oh, it's okay. And they, they know it's okay because I'm here and you're getting treatment. You're not going to get in trouble because you're with me. So if they, why would they allow him to be in the rooms alone with us? That should never happen in any situation. And when you came forward in 2016, Jamie, what was the reaction from USA Gymnastics? Very negative towards me. I mean, I got attacked on social media. I wasn't believed. Um, some of my so-called friends in the gymnastics community didn't believe me and said I was making it up for attention. Got, some people called me a whore, a liar. Um, you know, not Larry Nassar, he couldn't do this. Like, even a psychologist that worked with the team, like, basically, there were messages sent on Facebook trying to campaign for positive Larry Nassar stories. Mm. Um, and for me, I, I still have a hard time thinking about this happening to myself. And sorry, I'm just emotional today. Um, um, why, why I came forward was not for myself at all. It was because I have six nieces and three nephews and three on the way. and. I could not, I did not want this to happen to anybody else. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't care that people, I mean, it was hurtful because of some of my friends, but I knew if any man or Larry would have done this to anyone in my family, my nieces or nephews, or even the little girls that I had coached for so long, that's how I knew what he was doing was wrong.